Hi, this is the fourth in a series of videos that we're producing to help you understand who we are as Episcopalians, how we got to where we are, what we believe, and what does it mean to be part of this tribe, the worldwide Anglican communion. In the last video, I talked a little bit about the 39 articles, which probably was more confusing than uh, illuminating, but it has obviously spurred some important questions and I'm happy to answer any of those that you might have. Also found in the historical document section of the prayer book on page 876 is an interesting yet short document called the Lambeth Quadrilateral or the Lambeth Chicago Quadrilateral. This was a document that was um, established um, in or about 1888 uh, and, it is, and it indicates four very real and important um, aspects of our communion, our life together in the body of Christ. Uh, firstly, this document points out, as I have said earlier, um, that the Holy Scriptures contain all things necessary for salvation. Um, and as I indicated in the last video, and the 39 articles point out that it is inappropriate for our tradition to suggest anything else is necessary for salvation except that which can be proved definitively in Scripture. Uh, so the first wall, the first angle of this quadrilateral, if you like, is the value, the historicity, the importance um, of Holy Scripture. It is an integral part of our life. Uh, the second um, uh, axis on this quadrilateral are the two important creeds, particularly the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed as sufficient statements of faith. Um, if you study either of these creeds or both of these creeds in depth with the Bible in one hand and the creed in the other hand, you'll find that everything spoken in both of these creeds is solidly rooted in scriptures, grounded in scripture. And um, it's important in our tradition that we have statements of faith that we can trust. Now, I'm aware that all of the creeds of the church were created at a time when there were uh, particular heresies that needed to be um, um, needed to be spoken to, and there might be different heresies in 2020 or 2021 that we would uh, reformat or write a different creed. But for the purposes of our tradition, um, we recognize that these two creeds say it all. If we can stand and articulate these creeds with intention, with authenticity, with integrity, uh, it is uh, can be firmly determined that the speaker, the reciter of the creed, is solidly found grounded in a biblical faith. The third axis of this quadrilateral, uh, the important central place that the two sacraments of Holy Baptism and Holy Communion take. The two sacraments that were instituted by Christ during his lifetime to the play an integral part of our communions. The sacrament of baptism uh, evidences our initiation into the body and the sacrament of Holy Communion that many of you have heard me refer to as food for the journey of faith is that place where we are nurtured on the body and blood of Christ. We are equipped by His Spirit for an intimate encounter. Um, remember Luke 24, the eyes of the disciples um, in Emmaus were opened and they recognized Jesus in the breaking of bread. So too we recognize Christ in the breaking of bread and are equipped by His Spirit to live our lives for Him. So we have the Scriptures, the Scriptures, the Apostles and Nicene Creed, the Sacraments of Holy Communion Baptism, and important part of our life is the historic episcopate. Uh, we see evidence in the epistles in the New Testament that Paul um, established a community of leaders in local churches um, that he referred to as the episcopate or the bishops. Some churches call them elders. Um, but this very particular um, community of leaders were responsible for not only maintaining the faith, they are defenders of the faith, and they're the ones through whom the faith, the baton of the faith, is passed 
from one generation to another generation. It is said of our tradition that we're rooted in history, the historic Episcopacy, the historic practices of baptism and communion, we're grounded in scripture. The faith is defined in scripture, particularly through the tenets of the creeds. And finally, and importantly in our lives, it is confirmed by experience. Let me repeat that. Rooted in history, grounded in scripture, and confirmed by experience. An authentic, lively believer in Jesus will not simply cling to a faith that's grounded in scripture. They can become legalists. They're not strictly holding on to a faith that's rooted in history. Uh, they could be called traditionalists, but they, unless it is confirmed by the immediate and urgent experience of each of us, unless each individual has a, a dynamic, eye-opening, penny-dropping moment where they come to know the Lord Jesus as indeed their living Savior, then the other two aspects, rooted in history, grounded in Scripture, albeit important, it evidences an intellectual faith that is not experiential. Now, experience cannot be at the expense of history and scripture, but all three are important in our tradition. So as we look to move forward as Episcopalians, um, not only do we look to scripture and as defined by the 39 articles, we recognize the value of the uh, creeds, we, we also see statements like the Lambeth Quadrilateral as an important part of our life. More about this later. Be blessed.